ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا وسيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه واله وسلم يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كلام الله عز وجل وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة All praise is due to Allah We praise Him We seek His aid and we ask for His forgiveness we seek refuge in Allah from the evils of ourselves and the evil consequences of our actions. Whomsoever Allah guides, none can lead astray. And whomsoever Allah leaves to go astray, none can guide. I bear witness that there is none worthy of our worship and devotion but Allah the Almighty alone. And I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam is his servant and his messenger. O you who believe, fear Allah as you should be feared and die not, except in a state of submission to Allah, meaning Muslims. O mankind, be dutiful to your Lord, be dutiful to your Lord who created you from a single person, and from him he created his wife, and from them both he created many men and women. And fear Allah through whom you demand your mutual rights and observe the rights of your kin. Surely Allah is ever and all watcher over you. O you who believe, keep your duty to Allah. Fear Him and speak the truth. He will direct you to righteous deeds and will forgive your sins. And whoever obeys Allah and His Messenger has indeed attained a great achievement. The best words are the words of Allah. And the best guidance is the guidance of Prophet Muhammad. Peace and blessings be upon him. And the worst things in the religion are the newly invented matters because all the newly invented matters in religion are considered to be an innovation and bid'ah and every bid'ah is misguidance. The safety and the salvation of a human being is contingent on the state of their heart and the focus in Islam is on the heart. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Talking about the day of judgment, the day of resurrection, Allah summarizes what really counts there. Allah says, يَوْمَ لَا يَنْفَعُ مَالٌ وَلَا بَنُونٌ إِلَّا مَنْ أَتَى اللَّهَ بِقَلْبٍ سَلِيمٌ On that day, nothing will avail a person or a human being. Nothing will benefit that person. Whether wealth, children, or any of the worldly possessions, or titles, etc. Nothing, none of that will benefit the person. Except the only thing that will benefit the person is that the person comes back to Allah with a heart that is in good state. A heart that is healthy. And that means spiritually a healthy, pure heart. This is what counts with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we are all aware of the Famous hadith from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Collected by Imam Muslim And narrated by Abu Hurairah radiyallahu anhu That the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said 
ان الله لا ينظر الى صوركم ان الله لا ينظر الى صوركم ولكن ينظر الى قلوبكم another narration ان الله لا ينظر الى صوركم واجسامكم ولكن ينظر الى قلوبكم واعمالكم الله سبحانه وتعالى does not look at your physique your appearance and how you look like how beautiful how presentable how smartly dressed up you are that's not what allah looks at meaning for how allah holds you to account it's this kind of vision rather allah looks at your hearts when allah holds you accountable he looks at your heart and by extension at your deeds because your deeds allah created humans uh, in such a way that their deeds their external deeds are an extension of the state of their heart and of the actions of their heart so the focus in islam is the heart and actions without external actions without a heart being in a good state as many of the muslim scholars indicated specifically ibn al-qayyim spoke about that in a very strong kind of expression he says uh, that external deeds without proper care of the heart is the state of the munafiqeen of the hypocrites because they did outwardly everything a muslim is expected to do and the difference the main difference between the munafiqeen and the mu'minin the believers is essentially in the heart so it's important for every muslim to take care of their heart to make the heart their heart their focus in terms of care attention and making sure that their heart is in a good state all the time that it's connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the challenge arises from the na- from the nature of this heart the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam describes the nature of the, of this heart in the hadith collected by ibn majah in his sunan and it, the hadith was f- uh, classified authentic by the scholars of hadith from abu musa al-ash'ari radiyallahu anhu the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam says مثل القلب مثل الريشة مثل القلب مثل الريشة تقلبها الرياح بفلا The example or the similitude of the heart is that of a feather The heart is like a feather being blown by the wind It is turned over by the wind And this shows the nature of the heart which another hadith clarifies even further the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says in this authentic hadith al-qulub bayna isba'ayn min asabi' ar-rahman yuqallibuha kayfa yasha that the hearts are between two of the figures of the most merciful allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and allah turns them over as he wishes and when we say when we talk about allah and say as he wishes this doesn't mean randomness this doesn't mean randomness because what allah wills and what allah wishes is connected to his ultimate wisdom and infinite knowledge and his profound justice but the point here is that the hearts keep turning over keep switching there's no stability to the heart this is one of the biggest challenges and this is something that we have to pay attention to so you will find that your heart is not always in the same state you'll find sometimes your heart is not responding positively to your attempts to be an obedient submissive servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you have to strive against this you, there are challenges for you to maintain your heart and this is why it becomes incumbent upon every muslim to take special care of the heart and we experience that not only in matters of faith but even in emotional states sometimes you find yourself joyful and happy for no apparent reason and then an hour later you find yourself in a very negative emotional state seemingly without an obvious reason that's because the nature of the heart is that it keeps turning over it keeps flipping over and this is why the scholar said انما سمي القلب قلبا لشدة تقلبه that the heart is given the name قلب it comes from the same root as turning over that's that's the that's the root of the word because it keeps turning keeps changing and thus maintenance of the heart is an is a is a continuous business there is no way that you can just deal with your heart once and for all 
and get it over with. It doesn't work with the heart. It's a continuous struggle until the moment you leave this world. And this is why it was narrated that that there is no rest. There is no sense of relief for a believer until he or she meets their Lord. That's when it's over. Before that, there is no safety. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, it was narrated from him. He says, لا, لا آمنوا مكر الله لا آمنوا مكر الله فإذا وضعت قدما في الجنة لا آمن حتى أضع الأخرى أو كما قال رضي الله عنه. He said, I do not feel safe. I do not feel safe. And I do not feel like in so much security and peace until even if I put place one foot in Jannah, until I, pl I place the other foot. So meaning I'm completely in Jannah. Why? Not because he doesn't trust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but because he does not trust his own weakness. He does not trust the fact that he truly deserves to enter paradise. And he knows that entering paradise is a matter of a blessing from Allah. It's a fadl. It's a, it's a complete gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No one earns paradise as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that none of you will enter paradise by means of their deeds. Not even the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam himself. It's a matter of Allah allowing people, giving, gifting them paradise. So a believer should never feel safe about their faith. They're always questioning themselves. And that's why we, we, we can, this, this kind of understanding puts the statement of Umar al-Khattab radiyallahu anhu in the, re, in the correct context. That when he asks Hudayf ibn al-Yaman radiyallahu anhu who was named Amin al-Sirri Rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that he is the carrier of the secrets of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Umar al-Khattab when he was the Khalifa he approaches Hudayf ibn al-Yaman and he says As'aluka billah أعدني رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم من المنافقين. I ask you by Allah, did the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم include my name in the list of the hypocrites? Some Muslims get puzzled when they hear this. They say, Umar al-Khattab, like why is he having these doubts? Was he doubtful about himself? Was he doubtful about the mercy of Allah? Was was he not aware that he was following the way of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم? It was none of that. But it was his profound understanding of human nature that humans change. Humans change. And he does not, fee, does not have any guarantee about his steadfastness until the moment of death. So he doesn't know. He doesn't know how he's going to end up. Not that he was doubting the religion that he was upon. He knew that he was following the guidance of the Prophet ﷺ. But we humans don't have any guarantee we do not have this self-control, although some of us like to think that we have this kind of control. That we are able to control ourselves. And this is the meaning of the statement of some of the Salaf, some of the early generations. They said, مَنْ أَمِنَ اللَّهَ عَلَىٰ قَلْبِهِ طَرْفَةَ عَيْنِ سَلَبَهُ إِيَّهِ أو مَنْ أَمِنَ اللَّهَ عَلَىٰ إِيمَانِهِ طَرْفَةَ عَيْنِ سَلَبَهُ إِيَّهِ It was attributed to some of the Tabi'een. That if a person feels safe and secure, that's it, guarantee that my heart is good. This might be the reason that Allah takes their iman away from them because the constant struggle and that's the test of this life. It is the test of this life. So Umar al-Khattab was concerned whether he would remain steadfast till the end of his life. That was his concern. And this is why he asked whether he was included in the list of the hypocrites. And that's Umar al-Khattab. So what about us? This is why a Muslim should never feel secure about who they are and how good they are. Because how good they are is a gift from Allah and it's not about them. Nonetheless, we still have to strive to do our best. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not do injustice, will ne never extend injustice to anyone. But it's a constant struggle that we have we all, we all, all the time, we have to make sure that we take care of our hearts. So your heart will be flipping and that's normal. So the second issue here is that some Muslims, they fear that one day they are enjoying their salah and they are present and they feel the closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But then the next salah or the following day, they don't feel it and they start questioning their iman. And they think maybe Allah is rejecting them. 
or maybe there is something seriously wrong with their hearts that they start they start giving up on themselves no that's the nature of human beings it's natural to go through these ups and downs but again the more you strive and the more dedicated you are the more sincere you are as you are worshiping allah subhanahu wa ta'ala your lows stop being very low but you're always going to fluctuate your heart will always oscillate up and down up and down but you're again the down states will not be very down too too down that's what happens and that's how you continuously improve so it's normal we should not give up on ourselves and we should not give up on the mercy of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and worship is not dependent on how we feel about it that only when i feel good about it i'm going and i enjoy it i'm going to do it if i don't enjoy it oh there's something wrong that's not the right approach because we don't worship the feeling we don't worship the state we are the slaves of allah we belong to allah and our life and our existence is about devotion to allah so we worship allah regardless of how we feel and sometimes Allah takes away the good feeling in order to test whether we are worshipping Allah or worshipping the feeling itself. And that's how we take care of our hearts. You keep going no matter what. You keep making dua even when it doesn't seem to be answered. You keep making dua. And that's why the Prophet ﷺ said, يُسْتَجَابُ لِأَحَدِكُمْ مَا لَمْ يَعْجَلْ That Allah would answer your dua as long as you do not feel hasty. So he was asked, وَكَيْفَ يَعْجَلُ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ He said, يَقُولُ دَعَوْتُ وَدَعَوْتُ فَلَمْ يُسْتَجَبْ لِي فَيَدَعُ الدُّعَاءُ The person, the, 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 the haste that the Prophet ﷺ is referring to is that a person says, I made dua, I made dua, it was not granted. Then the person gives up on dua. This is it. Because it doesn't seem to be answered according to our timetable, we think Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not responding to our dua. The thing with the heart is that you have to remain steadfast. How Allah responds, when He responds, it's none of your business. We're not in a position to judge or dictate what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does. That's the relationship between Allah and His creation. He's the master, He's the judge. And we are the slaves. We don't get, we don't have a say. The only thing that we can do and we are meant to do is to choose Allah all the time. And do what Allah wants all the time, irrespective of how we feel or what we get from that. That's what submission is about. So as, as humans, we need to learn these things in order to manage our, manage our hearts well and keep them healthy. And we, know it's, we should know and keep in mind that it is normal for your heart to oscillate. It's normal for your heart to flip over, to feel high level of iman at one level at another time. You don't feel it. And the Prophet ﷺ explained that in a hadith that we are going, inshallah, to talk about in the second part of this khutbah. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفره. الحمد لله رب العالمين. الصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين وبعد. يقول النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم في الحديث الصحيح إن لكل عمل شرة ولكل شرة فترة فمن كانت فترته إلى سنتي فقد نجا ومن كانت فترته إلى غير ذلك فقد هلك The Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم says in this authentic hadith that for every action there is a heightened period of excitement, drive, and will. So you find, you find yourself driven to do it. And for every period of excitement and, de and determination and, and, and motivation, there will come a point where the motivation will go down, will subside. That follows from the nature of the heart. It keeps flipping 
and changing. It's impossible to have a steady state of Iman. It's impossible. That's not the nature of the heart. It keeps flipping. The point is, and you don't have that full control over it. So the point is that you keep going regardless. So the Prophet is saying for every time or period of motivation that you feel motivated and drawn to action, there will be a moment where this will subside. So what should you do? Most people give up, or some people give up on themselves. Start questioning their faith and their iman. You shouldn't. That's going overboard. That's overdoing the process. That's trying to figure out what you don't have access to. That's trying to have a lot of control. When you have to relinquish control and trust it, that trust that it is in the hands of Allah and Allah will take good care of you, as long as you are sincere and honest in your pursuit of Allah. So the Prophet ﷺ directs us to how we should behave in these times when our hearts do not respond so positively to our attempts to do good, when we don't feel like doing it. The Prophet ﷺ is saying it's normal, it's okay. You should not arrive at serious conclusions that might be detrimental. The Prophet ﷺ says, فَمَنْ كَانَتْ فَتْرَتُهُ إِلَى سُنَّتِي فَقَدْ نجا. Whoever, in the low time, they adhere to my sunnah. They hold on to the way of the Prophet ﷺ. You do the obligations. You do not fall in haram. You do not fall in innovation and bid'ah. You stick as much as possible. فَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ مَا اسْتَطَعْتُمْ You do everything possible to remain steadfast. To remain obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So whoever does this, then they have saved themselves. They're saved. They're safe. Regardless of the feelings of low. But whoever experiences this period of low time, they go to something other than the sunnah of the Prophet wasallam. then this person will bring destruction upon, upon themselves. Like what? When they go through these low times, they start questioning their iman. They start questioning whether you know, they deserve the mercy of Allah and the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or not. So they start going into self-doubt. Or somebody else might say, you know, it doesn't work. Every, every time I get a, on a spiritual high, then I go down again. It's frustrating. So they start giving up on the whole pursuit of their faith and iman. Or they start questioning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If Allah is merciful, why does He allow me to go through these times that are difficult and challenging? So they start giving up on Allah. Or they start seeking means that are not within the sunnah of the Prophet and not within the boundaries of Islam. So they resort to some kind of innovated acts of worship. Things that we don't have from the Prophet and his companions. Some innovated acts, bid'ah. Why? In order to experience a high. Experience a high, that's it. So there is lack of submission here. I need to feel it. That's what they're saying. So even if it takes that I come up with something new or follow another order or system that ascribes to Islam but is not based on the sunnah of the Prophet So we have practices like People singing as a form of worship. People dancing as a form of worship. People coming up with certain fashions or modes of worship that were not established from the life of the example of the Prophet ﷺ or his companions. That's going overboard and that leads to destruction. So we just need to be careful. So it's a mixture of remaining dedicated and putting our trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knowing that as long as you are sincere, as long as you do your best, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not let you down. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not let go of you. He will take care of you. And you should not let your feelings of not being motivated or not feeling that your heart is being very responsive, don't let that delude you. Because it's, it goes even beyond that. It's the nature of the heart to fluctuate, to oscillate between states. But it's your obligation to remain sincere and devout and do what you can and choose Allah in every moment of your life. And if you stumble, you pick yourself up and you choose Allah again. 
That's how life is, 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 is traveled. This is how you survive in life. It's not by being a perfect Muslim. It's not by being on a spiritual high all the time and feeling a high level of Iman and experiencing the sweetness of faith all the time. That's almost impossible. It's a minority among humans that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows to reach that state. So it's normal to go up and down. And there's no reason to be frantic and freak out when this happens and start arriving at serious conclusions that might be detrimental to our faith and our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in these times that we live when there is a lot of influence and the influence is magnified by means of technology, social media, and the hyper-connectedness, interconnectedness among humans, all of this influence really disturbs the inner states of, hu of humans and the heart. And the scholars have named excessive mixing with other humans as one of the things that corrupt the heart. Kathratul Khulta. It is named as one of the things that corrupts the heart because it brings a lot of distraction, a lot of disturbance to your heart. Sometimes you don't have a choice about this, especially as we have necessary engagement and commitments in this life. So it's important to realize that your heart is not in your hands, it's in the hands of Allah. And this should come as good news. Because what Allah chooses for you is better one than what you choose for yourself. Nonetheless, you still have to keep striving. And entrust your heart with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Know that Allah will never extend any kind of injustice to you. You should trust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this matter. So we ask Allah to help us keep our hearts steadfast. And this is why the Prophet sallallahu said in the hadith, and he, oh, he used to make this dua very, com, uh, very, very often, as Aisha radiallahu anha mentioned, that the Prophet ﷺ used to say, "Ya muqallib al-qulubi wal-absar, thabbit qulubana ala dinik, or thabbit qalbi ala dinik." Oh Allah, you are the one who turns around the hearts and the sights. Make our hearts uh, steadfast. Make them firm upon your. Uh, way upon your the religion that you prescribed for humanity. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep our hearts firm. Allahumma thabbit. Allahumma ya muqallib al-qulubi thabbit qulubana ala ta'atik. Allahumma khfir al-mu'minina wal-mu'minat wal-muslimina wal-muslimat al-ahya'i minhum wal-amwat. Allahumma khfir lana dhunubana wa israfana fi amrina wa thabbit aqdamana wa nsurna ala al-qawm al-kafirin. Allahumma khfir lana wa li walidina wa ni man lahum haqqun alayna. اللهم أبرم لهذه الأمة أمر رشد يعز فيه أهل طاعتك ويهدى فيه أهل معصيتك ويعمل فيه بكتابك وسنة نبيك صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم إنا نعوذ بك من الفتن ما ظهر منها وما بطن ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار وأدخلنا الجنة مع الأبرار إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون أذكروا الله يذكركم واشكروه على نعمه يزدكم وصل اللهم وسلم وبارك على عبدك ورسولك محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين